Hi, welcome to a workshop that I call To Clone or To Be Alone. What is a clone? Anybody got any ideas? Any of you clones? Yes? Kind of replica or something. Yes, it's a replica. And what's really important about it, it's a genetic replica. So do clones naturally occur in nature? Can you think of any sort of clone? Yes? Twins. Yeah, twins, a very good example of naturally occurring clones. And you were in the previous workshop about genetically modified organisms, I think. What about these? Would, are these clones? Yes. yes, we produce them from uh, cells out of one maize plant. So there's examples of clones. And in fact, when a prize bull is mated with a cow, often it, you can do that in the Petri dish, in vitro actually, to, um, and split the embryo to get lots of clones. But there's still one problem with that, which I'm going to talk about now. Let's say we want to have lots of milk production. So here we are. We want a cow that produces massive amount of milk. Say this is such a cow. <laughs> yeah, she's a big milk producer. But now, if we want, what we would like is for her to have offspring, female offspring, that will produce lots of milk as well. But now, if we mate her with a bull, <laughs> What's going to happen? The offspring will be males and females. And do we have any guarantee that the females are going to be good milk producers as well? No. We have to do a selective breeding then. And selective breeding takes a lot of time. We've got to wait for her offspring to grow up. And then we've got to see what sort of milk producer this is. And of course, all the male offspring we don't need. So that's quite a slow process. So this is one way in which cloning is really useful. Because, as soon, because as if we have male and female mixed, as you saw in the DNA workshop, they're going to get half the genetic material from here, half from here. But if we can make a clone of this cow, her offspring will be identical to her, when they grow up, will be big milk producers. So how does that happen? And do you think that South Africa has actually produced a cloned cow? Uh, I'm not sure. We have actually, and that cow's called Footy. And what you've got in front of you is the story about how Footy was cloned. So I'm going to show you how it all happened now. What one, the, the thing about this when one's producing a clone is one's taking the genetic material from the adult, the 23 pairs of chromosomes, in this cow. This cow is the donor cow. We're going to use her cells and clone her cells to make an absolute replica of her that's going to be a big milk producer. And it's a two-step process. Again, actually, it involves quite a few cows along the way. The first cow, which I'm representing here, is the donor cow. So what scientists did is make a scraping of the cells on from her ear, actually, so I'm going to represent the cells by this bit of Play-Doh here. And they scraped those cells off, under sterile conditions, obviously, and placed them in a little dish, which I'm representing by this, with this little bucky here. And they put some cells from her ear in this dish. And then the manipulation requires that these cells are actually kind of starved, so they stop developing, they stop dividing, they go into what scientists call a quiescent state. But their nuclei are still in there. And you know, the nucleus is where the genetic material is. So I'm having this little bead represent the nucleus. So here's the cell, lots of them, there'll be lots of cells, but I'm only interested in this one cell at the moment. And this cow, is what we're going to call the donor cow. We can also represent her up here. And here she is. There's the donor cow, and DNA, or well, cells, have been scraped from behind her ear. And they contain the two sets of chromosomes of cows. Now we need a different cow in the story. So here's my next cow. You see, this is a same t breed of cow, but a different pattern on it, so we can tell. Now, this cow is going to be the egg donor. This cow is going to be given hormone treatment, which will cause her to release a lot of eggs, and the eggs are collected. So I'm going to represent the eggs that are going to be collected. I'm just representing one of them from this cow here. So she is the egg donor. There's the egg donor. 
and I need a different color, um, a different color nucleus for her. So I'll put this yellow bead in there. There's her nucleus. So what the scientists do is remove the egg from the egg donor, suck out the egg. This is representing the egg being sucked out and the eggs also put into one of these little dishes in, in the laboratory. So here goes this egg into this dish. Now, the next part of the maneuver is one wants to get this nucleus with all the chromosomes into this egg here, but an empty version of this egg. So what the scientists do is called a micro manipulation. They put this under a special microscope and they can put in a very, very fine um, pipette tip and they suck the nucleus out of the egg. So I'm representing that happening. That's thrown away. What they actually want to do is get this nucleus here, which comes from this cow that they want cloned. So with a new under micro manipulation as well, they suck out this nucleus now and they take this nucleus and they're able with micro manipulation or cell fusion to get this into the empty egg. And so that's the next step of the procedure. So what we would have if I'm going up here is the egg donor. This is the egg donor. And there's the DNA donor. Now, this egg has to be stimulated to divide because it won't just divide in the normal way. It needs to think that it's actually been fertilized by a sperm and that this egg, this, this nucleus in here is the result of the fusion of an egg and a sperm. So they actually do that by giving this cell an electric shock. So I represent this by this little battery here and the positive and negative poles and what they do in the laboratories goes zzz, and that makes this egg cell think I've been fertilized by a sperm. I better start dividing. So it stimulates that nucleus there which actually came from this cow here to start dividing. So this nucleus divides several times, so a little embryo is formed. I'm just going to represent it like this. You have to think of this as a ball of cells now, like the 32 cell, cell stage of embryogenesis and lots of nuclei in there. And they now take this developing cow, which is identical to this one that the DNA came out of, and they put it into a third cow in the story, and she's going to be the surrogate mother. So into her, she gets put this little embryo, developing embryo. She's given correct hormone treatment, so it all goes right. And here she is. She's looking a bit tired, actually. <laughs> There's the surrogate mother, the third one in the story, surrogate. After an appropriate amount of time, the surrogate mother gives birth to the clone of the DNA donor. And here's the little cloned cow, born. After a while, the cloned cow grows up to be an excellent milk producer, just like the DNA donor. And the first cloned cow in South Africa is called Futi. Footy was born, so to complete the story over here, here is Footy born from the surrogate mother, and Footy is the clone of the DNA donor. It's Footy. What other animals can be cloned, do you think? Have you heard of any others that are cloned? Yeah, the first sheep to be cloned was Dolly. And Dolly the sheep was actually, interestingly, was actually called Dolly because the cells that they took from her, they took from her udder, and they were thinking of Dolly Parton. 
when they gave her the name. So I'm going to ask you to go through the exercise cloning a sheep and I'll tell you another rather fun one that's been cloned and, and that is a cat. And you can clone your pets and there's actually a place where you can order a clone of your dog, for example. And so the cats have also been cloned and what do you think they decided to call the cloned cat? It's really quite clever. Here's the cloned cats. They're called copycat. <laughs> so I'm going to give you um, a little bag with some sheep and horses and um, cats in and ask you to go through the process of cloning in the way I've described to you. There's some to be cloned. Right, we've talked about cloning cows, we've got horses there, cats, sheep. Now what about humans? Do you think humans can be cloned? Should they be cloned? Yes. What do you think about that? No. no. Are there not any times? What about childless couples? Same-sex couples? Um, what about that idea of cloning? Then should it only be for rich? What about same-sex poor couples? Clone children for them? Which partner is it going to be? No cloning. Why not adopt? Yeah. yeah. It's a uh, so what is your view of that aspect of the science? Good or bad? Bad. Uh, you, have some, you have some concerns about it. There's another type of cloning called therapeutic cloning, because what we've been talking about is reproductive cloning. The idea of therapeutic cloning is to, yes, get stem cells, which are also clones, and they can be used then to treat people, to replace even missing body parts, new hearts, more brain cells for people with Alzheimer's, more brain cells for people who don't have quite enough brain cells to start <laughs> off with. <laughs> so that's the way the brave new technology is going. There's a lot of regulations in place to make sure that this technology is used for good rather than bad. And those are the type of things you can discuss further. <laughs>